You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Bishem Ashizra 5781, 2021. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Vayakel and Pikude. And in our Parsha, we have the completion of the construction of all of the elements of the Mishkan of the Tabernacle. And the verse tells us, chapter 39, verses 32 and 33. All of the work of the creation of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting for the Jewish people with God was completed. The Jewish people did all that Moshe Rabbeinu had commanded them in the name of Hashem. They brought the Mishkan to Moshe Rabbeinu, the tent, all the different vessels, cross of cross of Rikhov, Amudov, Adonov, all the different parts that they created. The Pesuk can go on to enumerate all of those parts of the Mishkan that they had managed to assemble. But for whom was the final assembly left? Says Rashi brings the Medrash. Why did they bring it to Moshe? Why didn't they bring it to Betzalel? Why didn't they bring it to the location where it was to be erected? They brought it to Moshe Rabbeinu. Why? They, the Jewish people, tried, but were unable to stand it up. Since Moshe Rabbeinu had not done any of the actual malacha, the construction of the parts of the Mishkan himself, Hashem left the actual standing up of the Mishkan to be done by Moshe. It was impossible for any human being to be able to stand up the, the beams and the different parts, the physical structure of the mission was extremely heavy. No one else could pick them up. Moshe indeed was able. So Hashem said, it's Moshe. The Jewish people brought all the parts in front of Moshe for him to indeed do this, to stand it up. Moshe said, I can't do it. It's impossible. You do it. Take your hand. Put it on the put it on as if you're doing it. Nira Kimikimai, Uniska for Kame Elov. It looked like Moshe Rabbeinu was picking it up, but it would stand up on its own. That's why the Pasik says the Mishkan was put up. It doesn't say they put it up. It says it it went up, indicating that it didn't actually get put up. It was miraculously it stood up on its own. It would look like Moshe Rabbeinu was doing it, but it was done by Hashem. And of course, we need to understand what is the concept here, what is the idea, why does Moshe Rabbeinu need to do it? Let it just stand up on its own. Why is Moshe getting the credit for it? How come Klai Yisrael couldn't do it? Let's see the Medrash. The Medrash tells us some amazing things. We'll see if we have time to read it all. But there's really some awesome stuff here. There were numerous wise people there. They weren't able to stand it up. So they came to Moshe. And what happened? El Amr Shlomo. King Solomon says in Mishle, the famous proverb about the Eshes Chayel, the, the woman of valor, which is Klaus, Many girls have done amazing, amazing work. They've accomplished amazing things. But you are higher than them all. Who is this a reference to? So, it could be referring to Klai, so the Jewish people. But, says the Medrash here, it's referring to Moshe Rabbeinu, that he was able to accomplish something that no one else could accomplish. Other people had made the parts, they weren't able to stand it up. What did they do? Each one took the thing that they had made, the piece that they had assembled, they brought it to Moshe. And they said, Here are the boards, here are the beams. Moshe Rabbeinu saw them and he had Ruach HaKadosh. It's important to understand that the Divine Spirit, when we speak of Ruach HaKadosh, doesn't only have to be some inspirational thought or inspirational understanding or being able to know the future, these kinds of things. That's also true. That is what Ruach HaKadosh is. That's what Divine Inspiration is. But there's another aspect of Ruach HaKadosh, which is the ability to do something supernatural. Shimshon HaGibor. 
He was able to accomplish things. It talks about the Ruach HaKadosh of Shimshain. He was able to do things. Also, he had Ruach HaKadosh. David HaMelech, King David. He was able to kill the Doiv, the Ari, the, the bear and the lion. He had Ruach HaKadosh. It's a certain power. A person is given supernatural power from Hashem. Moshe was given this. And he was able to, to lift up the Mishkan. But, says the Medrash, like we saw in Rashi, don't think that Moshe was the one who stood it up. Interesting. He had the power to do it. He had the Ruach HaKadosh. He had the supernatural power. But that's not even what did it. It happened on its own. There were Nisim. There were miracles. It stood up on its own. Who come Mishkan? Like we saw in Rashi. If you think this is wondrous, how could it be that such a thing happened? The same thing happened when King Solomon built a temple 480 years later, 480 years after the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, as the Buzik tells us. So it also happened the same kind of thing. That, it says, the, the house in its being built, it happened on its own. It was built on its own. This is what the verse means. It's saying that it's telling us that in the base Hamikdash, when the temple was built, the first base Hamikdash, the first temple, it was built on its own, miraculously. The Mishkan, miraculously. What is the idea here? Why does the Mishkan need to be built miraculously? Why does Moshe Rabbeinu need to be the one who builds it? Shlomo Melech. King Solomon, why are they the ones who build it, so to speak, but it happens on its own? What is the message of this medrash? So hold on to that question and listen to a mind-blowing medrash. And before I start this medrash, I need to warn you. This medrash means something very deep, and if you read it, if you take it at face value, it doesn't really, it's very hard to understand. Let's put it that way. But when we see and we understand the depth of what it's saying, we're going to have an awesome unbelievable, life-changing message which will help us in our Avedis Hashem, in our service of God. Where are we headed? What are we striving for? What is... We talked in previous weeks about building our Mishkan, building our temple, learning the Torah. What are we, what are we aiming for? And how do we get there? So listen to this. Dover Acher, and this, by the way, is going to explain, listen cl- closely, because it's going to explain what's going on in the previous Medrash as well. I have you as Hamishkan. It says they brought the Mishkan. Hadawud Ichsiv. It's Eina Orena. Pasik says in Shir Hashim, in the Song of Songs, the beautiful song King Solomon wrote in order to describe the love that Hashem has for the Jewish people. It's Eina Orena, but not Sion, but Melech Shlomo. Batarsh Itra le Imoy. Biyem Chasunos of Yem Simchas Liboy. It says the Pasik, a beautiful thing. Go out and see, O daughters of Zion. But not Sion. It's a reference to Klaus for the Jewish people. The king, Shlomo HaMelech, which we know whenever it says the word Shlomo in Shir Hashim, our Chazal, our sages tell us, it's a reference to God himself, who's the king, Melech Shal Shaloim Shaloi, that the king, that the peace is his. Ba'atar Imai, the crown that his mother made him. B'yom on the day of his wedding, B'yom Simchas on the day of the joy of his heart. Okay, so we're talking about some kind of crown, we're going to understand what the crown is. Talking about the crown his mother made him. The Medrash is going to say, King Solomon, we never find that his mother made him a crown. We're going to talk about the crown of Hashem. What is the crown of Hashem? We're going to talk about it. And it's the Simchas Libay. What's the day of God's rejoicing we're going to see? It's the day that the Mishkan is built. It's the day that that temple, the, the tabernacle and the temple, sometimes King Solomon also, were built. And there was a tremendous joy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu of God with the Jewish people, with us. When was this verse said? In, in reference to when? It's a reference to when the day, the day when the Mishkan stood, the tabernacle was erected. It was an awesome joy for Klal Yisrael. That God's presence is now upon the Jewish people. Okay, so let's hear that. Joy for Klal Yisrael. Why? There's a Mishkan. What's the joy? The joy is that God is with us. Let's think about Torah also in that vein. When we understand God's will, we build that home. We spoke about that a few weeks ago. We build that home. We have God's presence in our midst, just like the Mishkan. Now listen. What's this reference to the the daughters of Zion? 
Bonam Amitzionanli, Ayide Ayide Kachavim. Listen to what makes us unique and what qualifies us to be called the daughters of God, the children of God, the, to have this relationship with Hashem. We're called B'nai Tzion. The word Tzion, the word Tzion, which means Zion, it means Tziyun. It means something that's Mitsuyan, something that stands out, outstanding. What's outstanding about Kalal Yisrael? We are pointed, Tziyun is when you point at something, you, you have a marker. This is where a Tziyun is, a, is, let's say, a grave, a grave site. This is so you know where this person is buried. You have a Tziyun. You have a Tziyun of a great Sadik, a great righteous individual. Kalal Yisrael is pointed out. We are different than the nations of the world. We are pointed, hey, there's a Jew. You see the payas? You see the yarmulke? You see the beard? You know it's a Jew. Heavy been nice tzion, it's yoninli. We stand out, we're outstanding to God. Bamelech Shlaimai, what does it mean in the verse when it says the King Solomon? Bamelech Shashalim Shaloi, Zemelech Malachim 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 Like we said before, it's a reference. When it says King Solomon, it's a reference. Shlomo HaMelech is Hashem. It's a reference, it's a mushal to Hashem. God is referred to as Shloimai because Hashaloim Shaloi, the peace is his. What is the crown that his mother placed on his head? The, in the analogy, Zeha Mishkon. Listen to this. The Mishkon is a crown on God's head, as it were. What is a crown? Think about a crown. What is the idea of a crown? Something upon one's head. What is upon a head? A keter is a crown, a keser. Uh, an atara is a crown. It's the thing that's upon one's head. In Kabbalah, the idea of keser, which, which corresponds to this concept, is this thing that precedes thought, right? Inside of one's head is chachma and bina. You have the mind, the right brain, the left brain, intuitive mind, intellectual mind. Upon the brain, upon the head, is something which is beyond mind. It's the, the first source. It's the thing that motivates the mind. It's the ratzain. It's the desire. It's the first seif masa b'machshav atchil. It's the first thought before any intellect, before any intuition. That's what the atar is, the, the, the crown. And listen to this. What is the motivation? It's the motivation. It's the motivation. What is the motivation? Listen to this. What is the motivation? What is the crown of God, as it were? It's the mishkan... Why is it called a crown? Just like a crown is beautified, it has pictures on it, it has uh, precious gems on it, so too the Mishkan also is Mitsuyor, it has pictures. They designed the curtains with different types of, of uh, threads, blue threads, purple threads, etc. The ones who are thinking thoughts. That's the thoughts. Again, we're talking about the thoughts. We're talking about the, the Atara is the crown, top of the head, motivator. What's the motivation? The Mishkan somehow motivates Hashem. What does that mean? What does it mean that the Mishkan motivates God, as it were? Let's see. Listen to this. Blow your mind. Says Rabbi Yitzchak, I looked through all the psukim and talking about King Solomon. I never found a verse that refers to a crown that that Bathsheba, the mother of Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, his mother never made him any kind of crown. So what is he referring to a crown? Listen to this. Rabbi Shimon Yechai, the author of the Zohar. He had a question for his Rebbe, Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Yaisi. He said, did you ever hear anything from your father to understand this verse? What is this verse talking about? It talks about a, motiva- a motivator for Hashem. Hashem is a motivator? Hashem is the source of all motivation. How can we talk about Hashem having a motivator? Hashem is the first motivation of all reality. He's the Machshav Rishayna. He comes before everything. There can't be anything before Hashem. There can't be anything that motivates Hashem, so to speak. He motivates himself. He decides. Why does he create the world? Because he decided. There's no predating. There's no motivation. This is the scary part. Okay, listen carefully to this. This is the scary part. Did you hear a pshat in this? Reb Shimon Bar Yochai, author of the Zohar, Secrets of the Torah, said, "Yes, I did hear from my father, Reb Yaisi, a pshat." 
Mashal Melech Shahisali Basichi, he says in an analogy to a king that an only daughter, he loved her very much. He did all kinds of things to show her his love. He kept calling, My daughter, my dear daughter, my beloved daughter. He kept showing her his love to the point where he called him his sister. A person has a deep love for one sister. You feel like, you know, they're on the same level as you. Finally, the final appellation the king gave to his daughter because of his great love for her. He said, you're my mother. At the beginning, Hashem called the Jewish people his daughter. Shemar, Shemi Bas Rui, Pasuk and Tehillim in Psalms chapter forty-five, verse eleven. Mem Hey Yudalaf, listen, my dear daughter, and see. Vatiyas Nech, turn towards me your ear. Veshichachi Amechu Veisavich, forget your nation, the house of your father. Okay, so Hashem refers to us as his Bas, which means we are his child, we are his daughter. We need to do what he says. Forget your past. Forget your your physical desires. Forget everything that you know and want. And listen to me. Listen to my Torah. It's going to be good. Hashem continues with his love for the Jewish people and he refers to us as his sister. As somebody who is, you are my twin. This is going to see. In Shir Hashem, in Song of Songs, Hashem refers to the Jewish people as his sister, Rayosi, and Nasi Tamasi, Shareshi Nimotak, who says, I receive Selaila. You are my twin, you're Nasi Tamasi, my sister. We represent God in the world. We are referred to as Hashem's sister. When we start to listen to God, when we start to keep the Torah, when we start to do what we're supposed to do, not start, when we're, when we're in it, when we're doing it, we are Hashem's representative in this world. We're Ke'ilu. I, I couldn't say this if the Medjish didn't say it. We're like God's sister. Now here's the scary part. Because Shabbat continues to show us love. He shows us love. He shows us love. He shows us love. There's no forcing here. We are choosing His will. We are choosing His will. We are building this home. We are building this home made out of Taira. We are building a Mishkan. And then Hashem calls us Imi, my mother. Listen to me, my nation. Le'umi also is another word for my nation, but the word Le'umi can be read my mother. Listen to me, Le'umi. It's very interesting. Hashem, you know, what is the idea of a mother? It's someone we listen to. It's the Atar Hashem Le'itro Le'imai, means there's something that's going to motivate Hashem. Just like a mother motivates their child. We listen to our parents. Our children listen to their mother. The aim is the one who's the motivator. Somehow, we are able to motivate Hashem. Let's see. This is an unbelievable idea. It's very difficult to understand. We motivate Hashem. It can't be. Hashem is the first motivator. Listen. If you guys listen, the Torah will come out into the world. My laws will come out. My statutes will come out. And it will calm down the nations. Right? It will calm down the nations. It will calm down. The nations represent the physical aspect of reality. We're going to calm down the physical. We're going to be spiritual. We're going to transform the physical into the spiritual. Amen Reb Shimon ben Yochai. Neshokahal Roshai. Reb Shimon ben Yochai. He heard Reb Leaz Reb Yossi to say over this word from his father. He kissed him on his head. Of course he kissed him on his head. The place of the crown. He kissed him. It's the love. Okay, there's so much more to read here, but I'm, I'm running out of time. But, but, but listen to this, because this is just, just unbelievable. And when we understand this, we understand everything. Say the, say the Mephorshim, explaining this Medrash, what does the Medrash mean? How can it be that something motivates Hashem? It can't be. Says the Medrash. Says the Mephorshim, explaining the Medrash. The Medrash means to say, When a righteous person makes a decree, says something, this is how it's going to be. God fulfills it. Whatever the tzaddik says, Hashem does it. Hashem causes something to happen because the tzaddik asks. You go to a tzaddik for a bracha. He says certain thing will happen. It happens. Why? Because, because the tzaddik said it and Hashem does what the tzaddik says. 
So the motivator of Hashem, Imi, the Atarash, Israel, Imi, Kodesh Baruch Hu refers to Klal Yisrael in their state of Tzitkus. When we are righteous, Hashem does what we ask. Now, how could that be? It doesn't make sense. How could it be? Hashem does what He wants. What does this Medrash mean? What is the Medrash teaching us? What is the idea here? And it's so deep and it's so beautiful. It's so deep and it's so beautiful. Listen and, and take this to heart. When I build that Mishkan, I'm creating, I'm creating a conduit that Hashem will, will do what I ask. What does that mean? What is this? Uh, I control God? No. I'm building a Mishkan, building a home. I'm learning the Torah. I'm doing God's will. I'm looking for His will. Chazal say, it's in Pirkei Avis, when I make Hashem's will my will, if I align my will with Hashem, and Hashem aligns His will with mine, what does that mean? It means that when I have completely aligned myself with spiritual values, with Torah values, I've created a Mishkan, which is all about, I am just here to do the will of Hashem. How, how do I do it? I learn the Torah. I find out what God wants. I create a Mishkan, a sanctuary for God to be shira in me, to, to dwell upon me. When I do that, even what I want, it's not really what I want. I just want what Hashem wants. That's what Hashem wants from us. That's what Hashem, Hashem is asking us. He's saying, do, it, do, do my will. Follow the Torah. Keep these mitzvahs. Build a sanctuary for yourself. And I will do whatever you want because you're going to want what I want. We're not the motivators of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, But to the extent that we have molded our minds to align them with the will of Hashem, we want what Hashem wants. And of course, Kodesh Baruch Hu, Tzadik goes about Kodesh Baruch Hu Mekayim. Whatever the Tzadik says, to, whatever the Tzadik wants, Hashem wants. Because the Tzadik has made himself aligned with Hashem's will. That's the Atar Hashem Itrul We the, We become in the same place as God. We become in the same will as Hashem. We have aligned our will with God's will. And then we find out that what we want, when we've really gotten there, and that's the goal, is to get to that place where what we want is what God wants. We find out that what we're doing is not really us. It's really Him. Our will is His will. Because we have aligned ourselves with His will. And now whatever happens is Him. It may look like us. It may even look like what we want. But really what we want has become what He wants. And that's why it's a hemshech. It's a continuation of the previous measures. Moshe Rabbeinu is asked, why is Moshe Rabbeinu the one who has to pick up the Mishkan? Because the Mishkan is about doing Hashem's will. Who is the one who knows Hashem's will the, the most? Who is the one who has to complete it? Who is the one who has to put that crown on Hashem's head, as it were? It's Moshe Rabbeinu. He's the one who was there 40 days and 40 nights, back up for another 40, another 40, 120 days on our Sinai. He knows Hashem's will. He's transmitting it to the Jewish people. He is the will that guides the Jewish people. He's the one who puts up the Mishkan. But even he, his will is just a reflection. It's just, not even a reflection, it's just a window into the will of Hashem. He picks up his hand, the Mishkan rises by itself. He, he holds on to it, but it, it goes up by itself. Shlomo HaMelech also is building a, a, a base Hamikdash as the representative of Kal Yisrael. He is the, the Ratzon. He's the will. The Jewish people. He represents Melech Shalom Shaloi. His name represents Hashem, the King. He is not. The Mashiach is not God. Right? Shlomo HaMelech was Mashiach of his time. The Messiah is not God, but he represents Hashem's will in the world. He teaches us Hashem's will. He's the one who has most subdued his will to Hashem's will. And therefore, the actions that he does may look like his actions, but they are miraculous in, in, in fact. In fact, they are miraculous. And so to the degree that we build a Mishkan, 
to the degree that we build a life of Taira, to the degree that we align our will with Hashem's will, we let in Hashem into our life. Hashem is Shaira, God's divine presence, His Ruach HaKadosh, comes into our lives and guides our actions, guides our thoughts. And when we ask Hashem something, because we're, we're really asking for Him, we're really asking what we believe that He wants, of course He does it. Of course our prayers are answered. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us to take to heart the amazing lessons of the Mishkan, what the Mishkan really means. Hashem should help us to be able to build a true life, a entire life, where Hashem is the center, and our thoughts and our minds and our feelings are guided by what the Torah says. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.